This is Rosalino, also known as Chalino Sanchez, a Mexican narco corrido singer. And at the height of his career, he was known as the king of narco corrido music. He is considered to be a pioneer and also one of the most influential corrido singers of the 20th century. But being known in this genre, doesn't come without consequences. You see, narco corrido music is based on stories typically about drug smugglers and sometimes real names, places, and events are described in the music. And unfortunately for Chalino, someone wanted to put an end to his story. He was handed this note one night while performing on stage, suggesting that if he continued to sing, it would be his last performance ever which it was. There is no way to know why Chalino continued to sing, but the following day at six in the morning, two farmers found Chalino's body by an irrigation canal near Highway 15, near the neighborhood of Los Lareles Culiacán. He had been blindfolded. His wrists were red from rope marks from being tied up, and he had been shot twice in the back of the head. This is the case of Chalino Sanchez. Chalino Sanchez, whose full name was Rosalino Sanchez Felix, was born on August 30th, 1960 in Sinaloa. His upbringing was far from easy. He was the youngest of seven children, and despite his parents' hard work, the family struggled in poverty. Tragically, when Chalino was just six years old, his father passed away, which left his family in a dire financial situation. It's difficult to pinpoint exactly when Chalino began engaging in criminal activity. Even his sister Juana described him as mischievous from a young age, and it's likely that his life of crime started early on to support his family through the financial struggle. Chalino's early experiences undoubtedly shaped the trajectory of his life, leading him down a path that would ultimately become the stuff of legend. I feel like to a degree I can understand Chalino and why he got into the lifestyle he got into. You see, my parents are from a third world country. They're from El Salvador and I was actually born there. And throughout the early 80s and 90s, there was a 12 year civil war in El Salvador. And luckily enough, we were able to come to Canada and start a new life. However, this led to one of the darkest times of El Salvador's history. You see, they had a gang issue that up until recently was unresolved and this gang was so big and such a threat that it was considered the second biggest threat to the United States after Al-Qaeda. So what does this even mean to me or for my family, really? It really means that if we had chosen to stay in El Salvador, there's a good chance that myself and my siblings would have walked the same path. And it's not necessarily because we're bad or good people. It just means that sometimes your living conditions force you down a path that you might not necessarily want to walk down. But unfortunately, because you have to feed your family and protect them, you have to make that hard decision. And even though there are some individuals who are complete psychopaths and just enjoy doing bad things, there is no doubt in my mind that a lot of these people don't want to commit crimes to begin with or do bad things. Juana's story is also a pivotal part in Chalino's journey, and it's for a heartbreaking reason. In the mid-1970s, she became the victim of a terrible assault by a man named Chapo Perez. The specifics of the crime and details about Perez are difficult to come by, and perhaps it's for the best. Nonetheless, it's clear that Perez was a dangerous and despicable man. Given the power that he wielded in the area, he likely assumed he could escape the consequences of his actions, but karma was just around the corner in the form of a vengeful younger brother. Chalino's fierce devotion to his family and his determination to seek justice for his sister's assault are integral to unfolding his story. This tragic situation was a catalyst that pushed Chalino to take matters into his own hands, and that path would ultimately lead him to both his rise to fame and his untimely demise. I think it's absolutely disgusting and horrifying what happened to Chalino's sister. I mean, I have a niece, a mother, 
and a sister of my own, so I can't completely blame him for what happened next. Even though Chalino was 15 years old when his sister was assaulted, he was ready to exact revenge. Around two years later, Chalino reportedly ran into Perez at a party. The story goes without saying a single word. Chalino approached Perez, pulled out a gun, and shot him in the head. Some of the finer details may have been lost in translation or even exaggerated, but the end result was clear and all the same. Perez was dead, and Chalino had no more business in his hometown. It was time for Chalino to leave. He went to Tijuana where he made a living helping people cross the border from Mexico to the United States. He had become a coyote. And a couple of years later, in 1977, Chalino crossed the border himself and went to stay with his aunt in Inglewood, California, where he remained for the duration of his life. Now, Chalino had always harbored a passion for music and dreamed of becoming a star. However, at this stage of his life, the aspiration was more of a pipe dream than a sustainable reality. When he arrived in Los Angeles, he had to find other ways to make a living. Chalino took on a variety of jobs, selling cars, washing dishes, and taking whatever odd jobs he could find. He also continued his illegal activities, dabbling in drug dealing and the business of helping people cross the border illegally, often working alongside his older brother, Armando. It seemed that Chalino was willing to do whatever it took to earn money, and his ventures led him down some rather unconventional paths. Making music, the dream that had once captivated him, was no longer a priority as he focused on providing for his loved ones and nothing more. However, all of this changed in 1984, unfortunately due to a tragic event. That year started off quite well for Chalino. He had married his pregnant girlfriend, and his income from his various odd jobs and illegal activities had improved his family's financial situation compared to the strain of their childhood youth. But with risky endeavors came inherent danger, and in that same year, tragedy struck when Chalino's older brother, Armando, who had been working so closely with him was shot and killed in a motel room in Tijuana. And understandably, Chalino was deeply affected by his loss. In response, he did something that some might consider uncharacteristic of him at the time. Chalino wrote a song, specifically a corrido, a type of storytelling ballad about his brother. And in this case, the corrido served as a tribute to Armando, celebrating his life. Now, this is just my opinion, but I think it's worth noting that there was a certain level of growth that happened inside of Chalino. If you really think about the incident that happened with his sister, his first instinct was to go seek out revenge. However, this time around, his first instinct was to write a song and make amends with his emotions. And I think that says a lot about his character and how he evolved as a person over time. While Chalino had no intention to release the song, he did share it with family and friends who were quite impressed by his work. At this stage, Chalino was in and out of prison due to his criminal activities, but he used this time effectively by writing songs for inmates based on their stories. As word of Chalino's talent spread, the demand for his services grew, and it became clear that there was an audience for authentic Mexican music that told stories as opposed to the more watered-down Americanized Mexican music that dominated the radio stations at the time. You know, I never really listened to corrido music growing up. As a young kid, I guess I was distracted by hip hop and reggaeton or whatever. But I will always remember it for family events gathered together and singing the music itself. 
So there's like a certain level of nostalgia that's tied to corrido music in my life, which makes me appreciate the music for having memories tied, wholesome memories tied to the music, regardless of whatever the subject matter is. Even his song that dealt with subjects like drug dealing and violence, they still offered a raw, authentic narrative that the people were eager to hear. Chalino's music soon caught the attention of Angel Fara, a sound engineer with his own studio in California. Eager to collaborate, the two worked together to create a 15-track demo in 1989, which Chalino then sold from the trunk of his car. Chalino proved to be a prolific musician, quickly creating music at a rapid pace while independently distributing his work. This grassroots approach proved to be an effective strategy, and by 1992, he had amassed a small but loyal fan base. However, this fan base was about to grow quickly, but not for the reason one might expect as Chalino continued to hone his craft and build his audience. A series of unexpected events was about to thrust him into the spotlight in a way that he could have never anticipated. By 1991, Chalino was performing small shows around California, and it seemed like he was making a name for himself. His promising music career might have meant that he was going to distance himself from a life of crime that he had known, and that may have been the case. However, at the beginning of 1992, something happened that the media would latch onto, and the public perception around Chalino was about to change for better or for worse. So for those of you who don't know, this is the incident that led to Chalino's major success. Not to say that his music wasn't good prior to the incident. However, the news coverage pushed him into the spotlight. It just seemed like everything that was going on in the news at that moment revolved around Chalino. Now, this led him to sign a publishing deal for $100,000 with Mexico's biggest publishing company. This meant that he signed away his ownership of the music to the record label. I'm confident that his family collects royalties on his music now. However, the ownership and masters of that music is worth millions of dollars today. It was the 25th of January and Chalino was performing at Los Arcos nightclub in the city of Coachella to around 400 people. The night was going as planned and it seemed like it would be a perfectly normal show until a man named Eduardo Gallegos, who was under the influence, took out a 25 caliber pistol and started shooting at Chalino. Chalino responded by pulling out a pistol of his own and began shooting back at Gallegos, who fled into the crowd. Now, the crazy thing is that Gallego was wrestled to the ground by a bystander, and he was shot in the mouth with his own gun. Now, it's worth noting that 10 people were injured in the shooting. Somebody was actually shot in the leg and unfortunately bled out and died. Four months after the shooting in Coachella, Chalino was in high demand and he decided to return to the place he came from by performing in Culiacán. Chalino had most likely made quite a few enemies given his history. He had become the subject of much envy because of his newfound success and it may have been because of this that there was a target on Chalino's head. It is known that during the show, Chalino received a note on stage that read something along the lines of, if you continue this show, you will die. There is no way to know why Chalino continued to sing. But one thing's for certain, it was his last performance. So just to be clear, no one was ever charged with the murder of Chalino Sanchez. The timeline becomes a little bit blurry, but the rumor goes that men that were waving police badges had pulled him over and told him that, hey, the police chief wants to speak with you. Now, obviously he complied and hours later he had been found dead. He had been blindfolded, his arms were tied, and he had been shot twice in the back of the head. Some people speculate that his death had something to do with the Mexican drug trade. But regardless of the motive, the outcome was all the same. Chalino was no longer with us. He was only 31 years old when he passed. 
Chalino wrote music about people that nobody ever wrote about. He wrote music about a life that most people couldn't wrap their head around. And even though people might not understand or agree with his way of life, there is one thing that most people can agree with, is that Chalino was loved and adored by his fans. I think it's interesting to me that, you know, I never took a moment growing up to really appreciate Corridos or Chalino's music. But during the process of making this video, I've gained a huge appreciation for the music that he made. I just quickly want to take a moment to apologize to my viewers. I know a lot of you guys have sent me messages kind of wondering what's going on, if I'm okay. Yes, I'm okay. <laughs> However, it's been an interesting few months and it's made it very, very, very difficult to release content, write scripts, edit videos. Uh, so with that said, I do have a trip coming up in August, which I will be away for. So in September, I will continue regularly scheduled programming. I probably will release a video or two in the interim. So if you want to leave a case suggestion, maybe leave it in the comments down below. But again, it means the world to me that you guys even reach out or just wonder what's going on with me. I, re I really appreciate it. With that said, my fellow investigators, I hope you stay safe and I will see you when the lights go out.